So now that we have uh, some data in our uh, SQL table as we saw in uh, our previous video, we are going to see how we can update uh, that uh, data uh, directly from our Ellen Bradley uh, PLC. So let's start. So as uh, we can see here, uh, we are uh, already online with our uh, PLC and uh, already we are logged in to our uh, SQL server as we can see uh, from uh, here. So uh, the first thing I would like to do is bring the um, SQL update uh, logic to my program so we can uh, update our table. So to do so, uh, I'm just going to import here um, my routine so that way we can speed up the process of adding the logic. <coughs> so I'm just going to grab this guy right here. So as you can see now I have uh, a new add-on instruction uh, in here, uh, SQL updates, and also I have uh, the routine uh, that I need. So next uh, we are going to add that to the execution so the routine can uh, resolve. I'm just going to get rid of this and this will be 3, that's good. Next, uh, like uh, we did for the SQL insert, we're going to add those uh, status from the communication error in here as well. Um, and then we're going to say updates. And we're going to add it also uh, in here for the reset. So just put another instruction here. Just gonna copy this and just change insert with update. Update. There we go. And then I'll compile this. All right, so that's all good and ready. Next, we'll go to our now uh, update routine. So uh, similar to the insert uh, or SQL insert, SQL update uh, it has the same looking and, and feel. Uh, so we have the three statuses, uh, the query done, the SQL error communication error. And here we have the configuration update. Uh, for uh, configuring the parameters for this uh, add-on instruction. So if we expand that, again similarly to the insert, we have the database, so we need to specify the database name in here, the SQL table, column names, values, so all of these uh, and the uh, columns count. So all of these are exactly the same like the SQL insert. The only difference as we can notice here is we have an extra parameter is the where condition. So as this is an update um, uh, query so we have to, uh, to have a where condition to complete uh, the query. So for our database um, if we go to the SQL Management Studio. So this is our database, Logics DB, and then our table is AI Log. So that's what we are going to specify in here. So Logics DB and uh, the table AI Log, and then the columns name. Uh, name, sorry. So we have, if we look at our table here, 
we have timestamp, label, description, value, and status. So I'm just going to specify these four. Uh, and we can specify, you know, all of them or some of them. Uh, it just depends on what you're trying to do. So I'm going to say your timestamp. And label. Description. And uh, lastly, value. Okay. So we specify the names of our table columns. Uh, next is we have the values. Now these values is what we want to essentially push to the uh, rows that we are updating. So if we open up the values, we're going to see that it is a array of 50. So that's mean we have up to 50 columns that we can uh, specify uh, for our table. Uh, so the first one here correspond to the first column we specified. So this one here, um, we have the bool integer real string date and time, and then we have the types. So similar to what we did in the SQL insert, we're going to have to specify the type. So the first column is date and time. So that means this is going to be number uh, four. So we're going to specify number four in here and we can specify the value that we want to put. So this could be, you know, a dynamic value or just static like I'm putting here right now. That's going to be basically, uh, it's going to overwrite whatever is in the, uh, in that uh, SQL table with this value here. And then uh, the next value or for the next column. Now the next column is the label, so that's a string. Now the string, if we look here in the types, we see that the string is number uh, three. So we're going to specify number three in here. And uh, the label we're going to say, for example, it's tag one. So the label that is in there right now which is uh, i believe milliseconds so right there milliseconds so milliseconds is going to be changed with uh, tag one okay and then next is our uh, third column which is the description again another uh, string so i'm going to specify three here and in here um, just leave it the same so plc milliseconds and then lastly is column number four which is the value so and that is an integer and if we look here for the types the integer is number one so we're going to specify one in the type and in the value here I'm gonna say uh, let's put 3000 so that's the value that will overwrite whatever is uh, in those records that meets the the condition that I'm gonna specify here in a moment so we're done with the values next is the column columns counts so I'm gonna specify four this is what we have and then the work condition. So the work condition what I'm going to put here is I'm going to say so whenever the value uh, is greater than let's say 50,000 then I want you to override that record with uh, what was specified in these values here. So at this point uh, we are ready to uh, basically push our query to the table and see what uh, will happen. So let's apply in here, hit OK. So now that uh, our parameters are all set, so all we need uh, to do now is tackle this bit and uh, 
the behavior we're expecting is in our table here the milliseconds will change to say tag 1 and then the values here any value that's greater than 50,000 is going to change to 3,000 and also the timestamp is going to change to the timestamp that we put in the PLC so let's uh, toggle this bit just like that and I uh, put here this uh, when the query is done to stop it so that's why I have this um, counter uh, in here so as soon as it's uh, done uh, it's gonna stop like we saw right now so it shows it's it's done so now if I go to my table here and re-execute we can see now that our table uh, indeed changed the label to tag one like we specified uh, and uh, the values change to three thousands for the one that's meeting the criteria of the work condition so that's how essentially we can update uh, our uh, SQL table from the um, PLC program uh, and then in the same way uh, for the communication error and the SQL error the uh, function uh, exactly the same way like uh, the SQL insert that we covered in the previous video so I hope I enjoyed uh, you enjoyed the content of this video uh, and now that we updated our um, table uh, in the next video, we're going to see how we can uh, retrieve uh, the data from that table back to the PLC.